Acts today. So if you have your Bible with you, please open up to Acts chapter 15. Uh, we have quite a long verses, scripture passage today. Uh, just 15, not too long, but we're going to be trying to blaze them through. Uh, so if you could open up to Acts chapter 15, 36, and then we're going to be going into chapter 16, verse 10. So 36 through 10. And if you have found the passage, could you please stand for the reverence of the Word of God? And I will read first, and then you guys read. We'll alternate back and forth until the verse 10. We'll read together. And after some days, Paul said to Barnabas, Let us return and visit the brothers in every city where we proclaim the word of the Lord and see how they are. But Paul thought best not to take with them one who had withdrawn from them from Pamphylia and had not gone with them to their work. But Paul chose Silas and departed, having been commended by the brothers to the grace of the Lord. Paul came also to Derbe and Lystra. A disciple was there named Timothy, the son of a Jewish woman who was a believer, but his father was a Greek. Paul wanted Timothy to accompany him, and he took him and circumcised him because of the Jews who were in those places, for they all knew that his father was a Greek. So the churches were strengthened in the faith, and they increased numbers daily. And when they had come up to Mysia, they attempted to go into Bithynia, but the Spirit of Jesus did not allow them. And a vision appeared to Paul in the night. A man of Macedonia was standing there urging him and saying, Come over to Macedonia and help us. Amen. You may sit. Uh, Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word. They're truly your word for us. So please help us understand what you want to speak to us. Help us glean from it and take away something that is godly and holy. Help us have reverence for the word of God. And in the name of Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. All right, so last week we talked about, Pastor Mike talked about um, Acts chapter 15 and touched on the basis about the Jerusalem Council that happened. So on the slide that you're going to see basically what the Jerusalem Council was about. So we see Jewish leaders, uh, Jewish people, and the Christian apostles, um, they're coming into conflict because they both accepted Christ. But the Jewish Christians, they wanted to also keep the law. But apostles were thinking, no, 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 we don't have to keep the law. It's by the grace that the, we have salvation from the Lord Jesus Christ. So they were arguing, they were bickering, and the, um, the Pharisaic leaders they, um, who became believers in Christ, they were saying, you got you to gotta get circumcision. That was the issue that was going on. And then we see that uh, the, Gen the Jewish Christians, they were also saying, well, Gentiles, yeah, if you accept Christ, they're saved. But you're not a full member. You're not a full Christian. You have to become a Jew first. And you do that by becoming, uh, getting a circumcision. So there was a lot of counsel. There was a lot of talking, a lot of discussion. And at the end of the day, they agreed, yes, salvation is by grace of Lord Jesus Christ alone. You don't need to get circumcision. It's not a necessary step. So it was a monumental moment because a lot of people were being burdened, especially the Gentiles who are non-believers, non-Jews. They were becoming uh, very burdened by it. And when they heard this message from a messenger, they rejoiced with cheers. And we're going to see that in Acts chapter 15, 30 through 31, where it says, so when they were sent off, they went down to Antioch, and having gathered the congregation together, they delivered the letter. And when they had read it, they rejoiced because of his encouragement. So what was this letter of encouragement about? Right. Basically, it was talking about, it's in the Bible, you can read it too. Um, it says that circumcision and other requirements are not necessary for salvation. That's basically what's being said. They're also saying, sorry for uh, putting you in a great burden, but that's not a requirement. 
Focus on abstaining from what has been sacrificed to idols, uh, from blood, and from what has been strangled, and from sexual immorality. We covered this last Sunday, right? And if you keep yourself from these, you will do well. Farewell. Fight on. Fighting. Right? So go for it. Everything was awesome. Everything was going good. You know, and just one thing that you notice, like, when everything is going well in life, don't you at times feel a little bit anxious in your heart? Everything is going too perfectly. What is going to go wrong? You know, I used to work in a place uh, where we needed this, this machine to work in order for us to work. But the machine would often break down. And one of the female coworkers that I used to have, uh, when I used to go to relieve and take over a shift, she would, we, we used to have a wooden table. She would always, knock on wood, Paul. I hope it doesn't break down for you. Basically it's saying like, you know, good luck. We knocked on wood. Superstition. It should be working. Hope so. Hope it works out. Everything worked right now. But it might break down anytime, so knock on wood. Right? And I think sometimes we feel like that, right? Like, I don't know, I don't have a house, but like, I don't, I don't, like, I, I live in a house, but I didn't purchase a house, right? But I don't know if you ever purchased a house. So like, it, the thought scares me, like, okay, you finally put in the offer, you got the house, but what if you go into economic depression? What if you cannot pay off the loan? What if the government, like, takes away the good, I don't know, right? And I don't know for you younger kids, like, you finally got iPhone 15. It has USB-C cord. Only thing that's changed, but it's awesome, right? And then you got it. And like, you just drop it on the street. And a car runs by. And your mom steps on it. I don't know. It's like, when everything seems to be going well, you're like, I think we have this expression, knock on wood, because we feel like something's going to go wrong. Something doesn't sound right. There's a great victory. But what's after great victory, right? And, man, right after the victory in Jerusalem Council, because it was a huge dispute, but they came to an agreement. They came into unity. But now, we're going to have lots of problems. Right off the bat, we see, we have read today, we see that Paul and Barnabas, two prominent figures of Christian churches, they fought. They duked it out. And it didn't work out. It just worked out before, but now it's not working out. There's such a sharp disagreement that they go separate ways. And then after that, you know, Paul decides, okay, he's going to go by off himself and with Silas. And he meets somebody named Timothy and decides to circumcise him because his father was a Greek. That makes no sense at all. We just did. Uh, we just followed the Jerusalem council. They just said that salvation, you don't need circumcision. But here is Paul who's going around the churches delivering this message. You are not to be burdened by circumcision. But, Timothy, I want you circumcised. Like, what? Like, what? What is going on? And then third, we see that Paul, he wanted to enter into Asia Minor to share the gospel. Like, what can be a more godly reason than wanting to go somewhere in order to share the gospel and make disciples, right? But he can't go. He is stopped by the Holy Spirit. So what is going on? What is going on? Why does everything seem to be going wrong here? Why is Luke writing this down? Shouldn't he be writing more victories? All the things that God is doing and working. But why is uh, Luke writing everything that seems to be going wrong here? And the, today's main point is that God was working for good for the people who loved him according to his purpose. That that's the title of the message today, and that is the theme of today. And I'm going to give you three uh, points based upon that. First point, despite their conflicts, God was working for the good because they loved God. Amidst controversial decisions, God was still working for good because they loved God. Even though the plan, the plan that Paul had was thwarted, God was working for good because they loved God. That's going to be three points. So let's go into the first one. Despite the conflicts. God was working for good because they loved God. 
In Scripture, Acts chapter 15 through 39, it says, And there was a sharp disagreement, so they separated from each other. Barnabas took Mark with him and sailed away to Cyprus. So we just talked about that, right? Such a disagreement. And you might have to, you know, whenever there is a conflict, you have to kind of start to wage. Okay, why? Why did they fight? It's not just they fought. Why did they fight? And the reason they fought was because of John, called Mark. John Mark. In Acts chapter 13, uh, 15, 37 to 38, it says, And Barnabas wanted to take with them John, called Mark. But Paul thought best not to take with them, because he had withdrawn from them before in the previous missionary, uh, the first missionary journey. Paul didn't want to take John. And he has a good reason. I feel him. John Mark, he was a quitter. When the things are going tough and your brothers, your comrade, like your comrade just drops on you, gives up on you, that's hard. That's really hard. And it also hurts. It also hurts. And also, Paul knew that this was a very important thing. He was not trying to push his own agenda, but he was trying to do the work of God. So he did not want to take John Mark. But Barnabas, he was a little different. Barnabas was an encourager. Barnabas wanted to take John to Mark, also for the sake of the gospel. He wanted to minister to John. He was not just a quitter. He was a brother who needed encouragement. They were both working together for the kingdom of God, but they disagreed on the method. And I think something very similar happened like two years ago. Um, before 49ers had Brock Purdy, they had... Jimmy Garoppolo and Trey Lance. We all know this, right, if you're a football fan, even though I fall a little bit. But there was a dilemma uh, two years ago. Are we going to start Trey Lance or are we going to start Jimmy Garoppolo? Because Jimmy Garoppolo, yeah, he signed up. So what, what, what are we going to do? And the people were fighting. They were arguing with each other. Uh, one camp was saying, just play Jimmy. He took us to a Super Bowl. He um, took us to two NFC's championships. He has proven that he can manage the game. He is a winner. Just play him. And the other side was saying, play Trey. You know how much draft capital we invested in him? Just play him. Give him the chance. Give him the chance to grow up. Make, let him make mistakes. Just play Trey and pray. Just do it. Right? And I usually don't like listening to arguments because it kind of, oh. But you know, when I was listening to this argument, I was like, oh. I felt actually a little bit warm and fuzzy inside. That's because they were both arguing for the 49ers. They were disagreeing how they're going to do it, how they're going to have a winning season, and how they're going to get the Super Bowl, but they were all 49ers fans. They were not haters. They were not hating each other. They were trying to actually want the success for the 49ers. They're on the same team. They just disagreed on the method. And something very similar is happening here, right? They're not hating each other. They're not arguing with each other because they're doing a battle of egos. They're not fighting with each other because they want more influence. That's not what they're doing. They both want the same thing. They're both arguing for the same reason. They want the kingdom of God to expand. They want the gospel to be shared. But they really differ on the method because Barnabas, he really wanted to focus on the ministering and encouraging people. Not just accomplishing certain things, right? He wanted to encourage people. Barnabas did the same thing for Paul. When Paul, when he first came to believe in Jesus Christ after seeing uh, Jesus on the clouds, man, other Christians were afraid of Paul because he was a terrorist. He was persecuting Christians. So nobody wanted to do anything to do with Paul because they think he, will, he might be faking, and at the end of the day, he might just try to arrest them and kill them. But Barnabas, who had a gift of encouragement, refused to just deny or just ignore Paul. Barnabas went to Paul, talked with him, trained him up, and vouched for him, encouraged him when nobody else wanted to be with him. He was an encourager. But Paul, Paul, I think he was a, um, I, was, I think he was task oriented. I think he was task-oriented because, yeah, he just wanted to get it done. It was such an important thing, such an important job. But they fought, and they separated. But they were not divided. They were separated. 
And they just had a different approach. And we are going to see that God was working even through this agreement. You know, so often we um, say at church, we should be united for one cause. We should be united for Jesus Christ. And we should be. This is not the optimum way of going about things. We should not be fighting with each other. We should try to come into agreement on how to work together. But at the end of the day, God was still working for the good. Because Barnabas and Paul, they both loved God, and they both loved the people. So let's move on to the second point. A midst of controversial decision, God was still working for the good of those who loved him according to his purpose. In Acts chapter 16, verse 1, it says, Paul came to Derbe and Lystra. A disciple was there named Timothy, the son of a Jewish woman who was a believer, but his father was a Greek. They encounter Timothy and Silas, encounter somebody named Timothy. And Paul took really a great liking to Timothy. And I want you to think about that because Paul just refused to take John Mark. He had high standard. This was a very important work. You, nobody, not, not just anybody was qualified to be in his bandwagon, like, not bandwagon, to be part of a companion with him, to be his partner. No, not, he had high standard. But Paul wanted Timothy. That says a lot about Timothy. He must have been a man of character. He was young, but people, they praised him for his character and who he was. So Paul wanted him, but he does something very controversial. In 16 verse 3, it says, Paul wanted Timothy to accompany him, and he took him and circumcised him because of the Jews who were in those places, for they all knew that his father was Greek. This does not make sense at all, right? If you're reading the Bible from the beginning to the end, like if you're trying to go along, and if you're trying to understand the context, like that's what you want to do when you read the Bible. You don't want to just take a snippet of a verse and like, oh, this is a wonderful promise for me, and like just, okay. No, no, that, that, oftentimes you might be misinterpreting it. You got to look at the context, right? And when you look at the context, they just approved in Jerusalem Council. You don't have to get circumcision, so why is Timothy, do, uh, why is Paul doing this? Why is Paul doing this? And they can carry, I'm really sorry, I'm going to, can I use your son as an example? <laughs> so last, last Sunday, um, Pastor Mike talked about how the morning prayer, right? EM doesn't have to, like, why are we doing morning prayer? Kind of like that. It's like, let's say now we have decided EM, English ministry, youth ministry, you guys don't ever have to go to uh, youth, um, the morning prayer because that's not the salvation. That's not how you become saved. So it's fine. You don't have to go. Like, never come, actually. Don't come to church in the morning. That's what we decided that. And then next week, like, I come around, and I see um, Deacon Carey's son, David. And I'm like, David, you're such a man of character. You're a godly man. I really like you. I want you to be the part of the staff for New Life Church. So, well, why don't you start by going to morning prayer? It's like, but he's the M. What's going on? Like, that makes no sense. But his mother goes to KM. So, like, Okay, but your mother goes to camp, so just go. Like, does that make any sense to you? It, it doesn't, right? So why is Paul doing this? Why is Apostle Paul doing this? Right after the council declared freedom, why is Paul deciding to go against that decision? And part of the reason is because you have to understand this mindset about Paul. 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 22. He says, To the weak I became weak, that I might win the weak. I become all things to all people, that by all means I might save some. You know, there are great missionaries um, in the past, such as Hudson Taylor and Lottie Moon. You guys might not know, but you should know Lottie Moon at least. We do Lottie Moon Christmas offering um, in the, in the wintertime to give to IMB. Um, these were missionaries who went to China. And when they first got there, uh, they dressed like, you know, a foreigner. <laughs> they lived in a luxurious house, and they tried to share the gospel, but it was not working. The locals, they were like, you're a foreigner. We don't want to talk to you. We don't want to hear your message. Go away. What's the response they got? But what Hudson Taylor and Lottie Moon, they did, what they did was they decided... Well, in order to share the gospel, in order to win one local person, they decided to 
change the way they dress. They decide to live with the people, not in some luxurious other uh, uh, compartment. They did that so they could share the gospel because they love the people. Because they loved God, but they also loved the people. And they were willing to change. They were willing to do different things as long as they're not sinning. And Paul is the same. You know, at times when we look at this, um, looking at the sharp disagreement on why Paul decided not to take John Mark, and we might think he's like a hardline missionary who has like no compassion, no pity. He just wants to get the work done, all task-oriented. But that is not the case. Paul really loved the people. Paul really loved the Jewish people also. That's why Paul wanted Timothy to get circumcised. Because his mom was a Jew. People knew. His father was a Greek. People knew. People knew that he was not circumcised. And he knew that even though he had the freedom not to get circumcised, he did not have to get it to get saved. But for the sake of the Jewish people, for the sake of those people, he decided, Timothy, you don't have to do that, but I want you to do that. I want you to give, I want you to give up your freedom in order to share the gospel. Do you also, I know you love the Greeks, I know you love your father, but do you also love your mom? You probably do. Do you also love the Jewish people? Do you? Well, do you know that they are also the people who need the gospel, who needs to hear the love? So instead of just fighting, thinking about what your freedom is, why don't we think about what we can give up? And also, also to share the gospel to them. Right? As Americans, as, especially as second generation and third generations, we really want to fight for our freedom. What is my right? That is love for yourself. Where is the love for others? Right? Where is the love for others? That's, the mind, that's how Paul was working. That's how his mind is working. He loved the people. He loved God and he loved the people. Paul was motivated by love. Paul disagreed with Barnabas and did not want to take John Mark because the matter at hand was too great. His love for the people, we, we cannot have a quitter in the middle. I'm not saying that's right. I'm more in line with Barnabas, but just he was motivated by love. Right? So we have to think about it. God works for the good of those who love him. And if you love God and if you love others, we have to think about it. What are the freedom that we can give up in order to love? What are the sacrifices that we can do in order to love? When you're making a sacrifice, you're giving up your freedom to do whatever you want. That is love. Love with no sacrifice. Love that is claiming everything that you want to do, my rights, my freedom. Well, I don't think that's love. You love yourself, but you don't love others, right? Let's move on. Acts chapter 16, verse 6. Third point, even though the plan was thwarted, we're going to see Paul's plan coming apart. And they went through the region of Phrygia and Galatia, having been forbidden by the Holy Spirit to speak the word in Asia. Do we have any planners here? Like, I don't know if you care about Myers Break, but I'm a J. Uh, I'm a. I, I like to plan, and you know, I like to talk to people who are who's a planner. Like, I I talk to some of the youth students, and one of them is a planner. That person has like ten years of life planned out. I really enjoy talking to that person. I was like, there you go. That, there you go. You're thinking about the future. There you go. Uh, but, you know, I, I, I think at times, um, and like myself also, like, because I'm a planner, I hate when things go apart. Like, when last minute things change and things like that. I hate it. And, you know, I used to, uh, in my previous church, I used to pack for the youth uh, retreat for the praise team. And when I was packing, I would prepare three boxes. 
So the first box is for the, all the cables, mixers, tapes, pens, laptop, and whatever I need. And I'll go into a second box, uh, backup tables, backup tape, backup pens, backup mixer, backup everything, backup iPad. And then I'll have a third box, just in case, okay, the power goes out and everything goes you know, wrong. How can we do this just acoustically? Like I would pack like a home, like even though we don't need it, like things like that. I would have a third box, right? And I personally, going to mission trip, it really gives me like, it makes my heart beat too fast because things just change. Things just seem, you cannot fully anticipate things, right? And ah, Paul is going through the same thing right here. I think he was a planner, I think. He planned out, we want, I want to visit every city that we've been, been to. And he already planned, I want to visit this Asia Minor also. But he gets interrupted. His plan has to change. He cannot go. It's not really told exactly how the Holy Spirit told Paul you cannot go enter into Asia. We do not have that information, so I'm not going to try to make guesses. It could be a dream. It could be a vision. It could be different circumstances. It could be a prophetic message. It can be many things, but we do not know why. But one thing is that Holy Spirit did not want Paul to enter into Asia at this time. And here's a lesson that we have to learn. Even if we have good intention... Even if we have godly intention in life, that might not be God's direction. Even if you have good intention in your heart, even if you have godly intention, who had more godly intention than Paul to go share the gospel? But that might not be God's direction. Right? Um, One of my fellow youth pastors in the Bay Area, over the summer, he went to a country to share the gospel. And uh, mission team, you guys have, you, you guys know, you guys still remember C2C and NE3? No? Yes. <laughs> so that's the, a way of sharing the gospel, uh, two ways of sharing the gospel. And basically what this church did uh, was they just trained in C2C and just trained in NE3, a way of sharing the gospel, and they just went to the country, and their plan was for two weeks, just go out into the streets and share the gospel. What a godly Godly intention, right? But the first day they landed, they went out into the street to share the gospel, and their members got arrested. So they had to go back to their building, and they stayed in their building for two weeks. They could not go out. They just prayed. You know, who goes to a mission field across the globe just to stay in the building, right? But that's what they had to do because their members got arrested. They had to pray. They had to resolve the issue that was at hand. Because these are minors. They have to solve the issue. That was not what they planned. But for some reason, it seemed like they could not share the gospel. So the pastor, youth pastor, he said he was a little disappointed, but they just prayed, prayed, prayed. And praised, praised, praised for two weeks. And he said that after coming back, he realized that was the most, most transformational and most fruitful time for the students. Because those students who experienced this, they came back and they continued their prayer life. They continued to praise the Lord and they wanted to share the gospel, not just in the mission field, but also in their life, in their normal life. God works for the good for those who love him, according to his purpose. And even if you have godly uh, godly intention and good intention, God might redirect that to somewhere else. God might do that. We saw a sharp disagreement that caused separation between two influential leaders, Paul and Barnabas. right? And we also saw that uh, Paul was making a controversial decision regarding circumcision. And then now we see that Paul, his plan is getting unfoiled. His plan is coming apart. But God was still working. God was working. Because Paul and Barnabas, they loved God. So God was redirecting Paul and Barnabas according to his purpose. 
And one of the cool things, I think it's cool. You might not find that. <laughs> Let's see. In Acts chapter 16, verse 10, it says, And when Paul has seen the vision, immediately we sought to go on into Macedonia, concluding that God had called, them, called us to preach the gospel to them. This is the first time we see we in the book of Acts. So obviously it's saying I am Paul and others. And this I is Luke. So somewhere in this point, Luke has joined the party of Paul. The trip began with a bad taste in the mouth, with a sharp discriminant, conflicts, discord, what is going on. But we see that God is continuously working behind the scene. Even though it's not the most optimal thing, God is working for the good of those who love him according to his purpose. God is redirecting according to his purpose because God, he knows better. Because God knows where the gospel is needed. Because God wants us to grow. And where are you right now? I don't know if you, I don't know if your plans are coming apart like Paul, just like here, like just doors being closed. I don't know if you're going in a, having a conflict with people. I don't know if you're making a controversial decision. I don't know. Right. But one thing that we should be examining is, are we loving God in the midst of all of this? You know, we might make mistakes. We might not say the right thing. We might make some decision that might be a little confusing to people. We, we might see our plans coming apart. I, I see many of my plans coming apart. Like every, actually, every plan is coming apart. Like, are we loving God, right? And I would like to invite the priest team up. And as they are setting up, um, I've seen three main reasons why. I, I just want to see this um, before we enter into time of prayer. I've seen three main things that happens. Three reasons why. God might be closing your doors or redirecting you. There could be more. There are more, actually. But I see mainly three reasons why. First is to refine your heart. You know, sometimes the plan that we have set, it might be godly, it might be good, but it might not be the direction. But at times, the plan that we have set might not be godly at all. Right? It might not be godly at all. And perhaps God cares too much about you and wants to refine your heart through this season by unfolding the, the plan that you have. In order to refine your heart because He cares too much about you. Second reason I sometimes see is for new opportunities. Sometimes God is calling you somewhere else than you are trying to go. It might be vacation, it might be school, it might be job. God might be changing or closing the door because He wants you somewhere else. Because He wants you to go somewhere else and to be the salt and light of that area. And third reason I saw when just plans seem to change is for the protection. God may close the door and to protect us from harms and um, harmful situations. In my previous church, we had a we were planning to go to one of the countries for the summer mission, but the head pastor, as he was praying, he really felt anxious and he had no peace about it. So he decided to close the door. He decided not to go. And, you know, a lot of people were disappointed because they were preparing and wanting to, really wanting to go to share the gospel. But head pastor was like, we're not going. And what happened after is that during the time that we were supposed to go, there was terrorist attack in the country. So if we would have went, it would have been a big problem. Sometimes God protects us by closing the door. And there are many other reasons why God could be closing your door. But please do know that God loves you and cares for you and wants the best for you. God is working according to his purpose. God is working according to his purpose. 
And the main thing that we have to be asking, are we loving God? In one of the TV show I used to watch, they had this verse actually, Romans chapter 8, verse 28. It, had, it was stitched onto a pillow. But it just said, God works for the good of the people. That's all it said. God works for the good of the people. No, He doesn't. I mean, He does, but are you reading the Bible? Because that's not the scripture, what the code says. That's not what the passage says. It says God works for the good of those who love Him. God doesn't just work for the good of those whoever. God doesn't work for the good of those who are evil, who are pursuing the path of the wickedness. No, God does not. It's a lie. God works for the good of those who love Him. Do we love God? Do we love God? So we're going to be entering into time of prayer, and the first prayer I want us to pray about is... love God you might be getting into conflicts you might be planning different things are they for godly reasons are they for good intentions for God's kingdom cause of our minds because there are many things in our life where we are fighting for our freedom fighting for, fighting for our rights fighting for ourselves because we love ourselves and that is good it's good to love yourself but if you only love yourself and don't know how to love others and you don't know how to love God you don't know how to sacrifice we need to repent we need to repent. We need to transform. We need transformation of our mind. We need to trust in the work of the Jesus Christ on the cross, shedding His blood. He sacrificed. He didn't have to give up His freedom as Son of God, as God. He didn't have to die, but to show love, He did. To exemplify love, He did. He did to show grace, He did. He needed to show mercy, He did. He needed to show kindness, He did. He needed to show patience, He did. He needed to show His love and His care for the people who are stoned, sinners, He did. He died. Because He loved. He died for the church. Christians, if we truly want
want to live for him if we proclaim that we love God we need transformation of our mind because our mind has been tainted our mind has been shaped by the people who are not godly we need to repent and pray for transformation of our mind so at this time I want us to pray for repentance pray for repentance that we do not cheapen cheapen the word of love let us not cheapen the word of love love is costly love is patience love is sacrifice and if you're not willing to sacrifice then you do not love
uh, just tapping into the promise of God, the word of promise that He cares for us, that He is working according to His promise so that we can grow more like Jesus Christ to be more loving and more godly. But also I want us to make a plan. Every day we are going to spend time with the Lord so that we can be assured once again so that we can trust in Him. Just as we sang trusting in God so that we can trust in God regardless of all whatever the circumstances that might be happening. So at this time I want us to pray for peace in our hearts. And you can join the praise team as you are praying.